Welcome back to the 2015 Subaru Australian Mountain Bike Championships. And Peter, up next, the fast cats, the crazy cats, the downhillers. Yeah, I think uh, this is my favourite event on the calendar. I love watching it, spectating it. I don't love racing it, but um, but I'll be out there cheering those guys along today. Well, it's maybe something you can do next time. Get into the downhill as well. But look, the reflexes of these riders are comparable to Formula One drivers. They can just think things through and react so quickly. Yeah, I think uh, the thing to remember is the guys do track walks. They spend a lot of time looking at their lines, and, and it really is a bit of a specialist sport, really. It's mm. it's uh, it's not just uh, big balls going down a hill. These guys put a lot into it. <laughs> well, the bikes are so different as well, from a cross-country bike or a hardtail that we've been seeing so far to these things. There's so much uh, travel in the suspension, laid right back. Very different. Yeah, yeah, different setups. Uh, the bikes walk, a cross-country bike might weigh eight to nine kilograms and a mountain, a downhill mountain bike is going to be in your 15, 16 kilogram range. So uh, those guys aren't riding up the hill, that's for sure. <laughs> Heavier the better to go yeah. fast down. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Who are we looking out for? Obviously Troy Brosnan in the elite men's field is the favourite. Yeah, I think so. I think he definitely comes in the favourite. He's been really fit. He's had a solid off season. Um, but I mean, there's so many challenges. We have so much depth in Australia. Uh, Conor, Conor Ferran's been riding really well leading into the championships. And um, I think I think it's really going to be hairs splitting the, the top few. Well, there's only 0.2 of a second between those two in qualifying. So yeah, really, it's anyone's race, isn't it? Yeah, I think you'd be surprised. World Cups often come down to 0.1 or 0.2. And, and even after a three or four minute run, it's always really mm. close. Okay, Mick Hanna certainly will be in the mix as well. Qualified fourth fastest, but we'll see how he goes. Very competitive at 31. And in the women's, his sister, obviously, Tracy, has to be the favourite. Phenomenal. She she was so quick down the hill yesterday. I, I really can't see um, any of the girls getting quite close to her. Uh, Claire Bacar's racing from Canada here, and, um, you know, as talented as she is, she was still a little bit off the pace. So I think, you know, she, she might nearly have the title wrapped up. Well, we have uh, last year's junior world champion, Tegan Malloy, in the mix as well. Do you think she can step right up into the elite category and go my way with the medal? She's been riding real well all season. She's had a couple of victories, victories under her belt. But uh, I, I think, you know, it, it really is a big leap up from under 19. They don't have that intermediate under 23 category like the cross country do. So I, I think, you know, racing against the likes of Tracy Hanna, who is always on a World Cup podium, um, you know, she'd be happy to finish second to her. Well, he was only just in front in qualifying, but Troy Brosnan is the favourite for the elite men's race. And I caught up with him to have a bit of a chat. Troy Brosnan, you've got the number one plate on the bike ready to go for the Downhill National Championships. Do you feel the pressure of that number one or are you just going to embrace it? No, nah, just try and embrace it. Just, uh, you know, I've rode this track a lot and it's it's a really good one. It suits my style. It's steep, dusty and kind of what I ride at home. So it's uh, always good fun coming to National Champs and there's a few faster riders here as well. So that kind of adds to the excitement and uh, it's definitely going to be a good race and a close one. How do you feel the form coming into this? Yeah, I feel really good. Fitness has been uh, pretty well up there and just getting fitter and fitter each day. So. Um, just with racing, just go out there and do my thing and it's kind of a good lead up and uh, I guess a good, a good base really for, for the World Cups to come and hopefully we can get the win here at National Chance and they'll uh, give me some confidence. I can beat him in table tennis, but downhill, no, nah, not even going to try. Well, let's now take a look at the downhill course, and it's Troy Brosnan talking us through it. Hey, Troy Brosnan, taking you down the National Champs track and bright. Here we go. Here we're coming into one of the steeper sections on the track. You've got to hit this left-hander and kind of set up good, and then you come into the right-hander. You see it's all dug out and really gnarly and rocky and then you drop straight down. It's a, a really steep, narrow section and you've got to let off the brakes and then you come off of that into a right hand and you've got to stay right. You don't want to go left, you can go down all the way down the hill. Here's number two, the rock garden. You're coming into the rock garden, you come over this rise and then you just see a whole bunch of rocks staring at you. It's a little bit intimidating this year and everyone's kind of standing around trying to find their place, but you kind of just tiptoe your way through, try not to get any punches and hopefully you come out the other side nice and clean and get ready for this sharp left hand. And we've got the new section at the bottom coming into that. We've got uh, you know this nice right hander, jump into the left hander. Then you kind of go over a little rise up over the uh, off camber, you kind of do a little jump there and then you've got to shoot onto the fire and then a big sprint to the finish. And now it's time to get down to the competition. The favourite for the under 19 women's is on the start ramp underway. That's Ellie Whale, the time to beat from Sean O'Hearn. He's 7.06. So see how 
Ellie Whale goes coming down the course now. Now, it really has been blown out quite a bit, the course, with so much practice over the last couple of days. It really has changed quite a bit, Stu, coming down to when it really matters now in the finals. And the riders are used to that. They're used to a multi-day event causing changes to the track. The hot favourite in the under-19s is Ellie Whale. She comes across the line and the clock says 5.49.46. The under-19s national champion, Ellie Whale. Well, I'm kind of struggling to stand right now, so fair to say I gave it what I, all I had and I'm really happy with it. Not so many silly mistakes, so couldn't be happy to take the win also. And it's time for the under-19 men to hurtle down the course here in Bright. They come from Mystic Mountain at the top. There's the launching pad for the paragliders as well. And this is Dan Booker, number 230. He was in the top 10 at the Oceana Championships recently and he'll be looking to be somewhere similar to that here at the Australian Championships. And we've been looking forward to this course ever since then as Connor Fearing talked about this course and said that we'd you know, be capable of holding a World Cup here. Number 2.30 now, Dan Booker coming down into that finishing straight. Out of the saddle, pushing very hard to try and get to the finish line as quick as possible. 2.30, oh sorry, 4.23 it was for him. That's the best time, that's why he's pushing so hard. Dan Booker goes to the top and he will be straight into the hot seat. Okay, next up Joel Willis and this guy can ride. Joel Willis, super fast. We have seen him with some great results. In fact, he hasn't been outside the top five in 2015. So Willis smacks past our camera there at the Subaru fence. And he's into the hot seat with a 4.21.55. The Subaru hot seat falls and falls. After a long delay, they're now coming down thick and fast with best times. Joel Willis to a 4.21. Just about matching his time in qualifying as well. Harry Bush is now coming to the line. Bush is pushing, pushing hard he is as well. Will he get there? Just outside, 4.23.3 for him. Second best time. Okay, we have just four riders remaining. Jackson Frew, Remy Morton, Max Wachowski, and the prodigious Andrew Crimmins. He has been on a flyer of late. His crew in Fredbo were predicting he could go close to Brosnan's time. But right now on the screen, it is 2.03 of Jackson Frew. This guy rides anything he can find, and he scored himself a second place in the National Series in Toowoomba and a fourth in the Oceania. So he brings good form in the suitcase on his way down to bright Victoria. And we are looking now at a 4.04 as he comes into the straight. Give him the hot seat now. That's going to fall. So Jackson Frew is absolutely flying, and he is into the Subaru hot seat with a 4.14.13 with just three riders left. 7.4 seconds faster than Joel Willis. He had enough time to get excited and then calm back down again before he crossed the line. He was so fast with that 4.14. Next out on course, Remy Morton. Here he comes down that final push, back onto the finishing straight. This is also quick. Morton is quick, quick, quick. And we could see the hot seat falling again. 11.60 hot seat. Remy Morton, the Subaru hot seat just falls and falls. Two riders left. Max Wachowski, the National Series round winner just two weeks ago in Toowoomba. Well, Wachowski rode a 4.11 in qualifying. It's a 4.11 that Morton sits in the hot seat in possession of and here he comes it's on 406 7 it's going to be tight i'm not sure if he's going to get there perhaps perhaps not just outside 412 second best time 0.85 out so it all comes down to crimmins crimmins has been untouchable of late he took the oceania championships with a great margin crimmins is here and ladies and gentlemen the national champion for the under 19 men's is none other than andrew crimmins with a 404 78. well mr consistency we can call him 404 78 qualifying 404 72 so only just so slightly slower than he was in qualifying, but the track has really washed out as well. What a performance by Crimmins. Yeah, it was pretty well perfect, really. Track conditions have changed a lot all weekend. 
Definitely could have, couldn't have asked for much more than that. So I'm stoked. In first place from New South Wales, the winner of the gold medal in the junior men, ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Crimmins! A stunning performance it was by Andrew Crimmins, taking out the gold medal ahead of Remy Morton in silver, and the bronze was Max Wachowski. Coming up after the break, it'll be the elite women taking on Mystic Mountain. Tegan Malloy, it's the start of a new season, but this is one where you started as a world champion from under-19s last year, the downhill world championships. Take us back to that. What was the emotion like, you know, when you got that rainbow jersey? Oh, it was pretty amazing standing on top of the podium and seeing all the other all these athletes out in the crowd cheering me on. It was just a, a phenomenal experience that I'll never forget. You're hoping to take that sort of momentum into this season and in particular the national championships this weekend? Yeah, definitely. Ever since um, Norway, I've been training hard, building up into the Aussie season, um, racing the national series to keep me on my toes and um, hopefully carry that momentum onto the World Cup season. Obviously, you've got no issue with age. You're one of the youngest riders, but one of the most competitive in the elite category, so no respect for the older ladies. <laughs> oh, no, we all get along pretty well. It's um, cool being the younger one, I guess. It's sort of the baby of the group. Um, everyone looks out for each other, which is nice to see. Now, what do you think of the, the course here in Bright? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, it's one of the probably the best tracks in Australia. It's really steep. It's got lots of roots and rocks, quite technical compared to other tracks. Um, it's just awesome. Well, we'll see more of Tegan Molloy very soon, but the first of our favourites is Shelley Flood coming down the start ramp, wearing number three. And we'll get a real test of what this course is like and how fast they can go. Now, this is one of the riders that she's catching up to, Sarah Silverlock, with the slower riders on course. But Shelley Flood should be coming into view. There she is now, coming down number three. She's approaching the tricky little section where they have a double berm transition jump before the drop into the finish. And with the women starting a minute apart, you can really see the speed of Flood as she comes into this double berms, goes around and starts to catch Silverlock. Looks like she's going to find a way past as she pedals hard to the line. And Shelley Flood out of the saddle, working this finish and she's coming in at its time of 520.46 for Flood through the finish arch. And she'll go straight onto the hot seat and wait for the next few riders to come down. The next one she'll see post the time is Kelly Weinert. Time to beat now from Shelley Flood, five minutes and 20 seconds. And look, at the split, she's a little bit off the pace today. She wasn't at the Oceania's. She snuck onto the podium in fifth place. And now as she comes down this final shoot, it doesn't appear that she'll post the fastest time. Weinert now into the straight, Scott. Well, I think it's a lovely transition. I tried to ride her on my cross-country bike the other day. It wasn't that lovely at all, but and she's, she's coming down to the finish now. A little bit off the, the uh, pace, but still second best for her now. Six minutes and one second. Leaves Shelley Flood in the hot seat with four riders to come. So the good news for Shelley Flood is she's on the podium and in at least fifth. Where will it be? Well, these four riders will have some say in that. The next rider is Sarah Booth. She won the first round of the National Series in the UEs and she's coming towards us now at a time that will go into the top three. Won't quite take the hot seat. Second fastest with a 5.30.79. 22 seconds faster than in qualifying, qualify, so good performance by her. Tegan Malloy, now here she is, the young gun, the world champion from last year in the junior category, now up in the elites, number two, Tegan Malloy. Around those burns, down into the final run, final push to the line, hasn't hit five minutes yet, so this will be the new best time. The Oceania champion is going to be the hot seat sitter. She's in the Subaru hot seat with a 5.02 in a time yesterday that would have seen her sit third. So she was third yesterday. That may well see her third again. We'll see how Claire and then Tracy Hannah goes. So this is Claire Bouchard, the Canadian on screen. Claire Bouchard just coming down towards those final two berms and the final steep section drop off down into the finish line. And over here, 
transition across. A little bit of a jump there, really washed out that section there in the opposite camber. Now back down onto the fire trail. Big push to the line. This will be the best time, under five minutes. Look, Clay Bouchard was the fastest rider at the Oceania Championships as well, Scott, but being not Australian, she wasn't eligible to win the title. She now sits in the Subaru hot seat. She can win today's race. She can't win the National Championship. So the National Championship will come down to Tegan Malloy and Tracy Hanna. No, this is Tracy Hanna! Twelve months on from winning the national downhill title, Tracy. We haven't seen much of you this summer. How's your form? How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I spent a lot of my off season at home this year, so just training and getting ready for the upcoming World Cup season. And yeah, the nationals will be a good like little test first race, and it's a really great course. And we love coming down to Bright because it's such a cool town as well. And looking relaxed in the gate. Tracy Hanna has been junior world champion. She stood on World Cup podiums. She's on Mystic Mountain. There she is, number one on the plate. 4.35 in qualification. Incredibly fast compared to the other riders. Now sitting at 4.27, so a little bit slower than what she was yesterday. But will she be fast enough to get the gold medal from Tegan Malloy? She's trying to defend the national title, ladies and gentlemen. Tracy Hanna's had a career in two parts. It's been great, and it's going to be great again today. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the little Trace from Queensland, the national champion in the elite women's downhill here in bright Victoria in 2015. She's backed up and done it again. Favourite coming into it, the fastest qualifier, and then just tackled Mystic Mountain better than everyone else. Still a bit closer in the end than we expected. 3.76 seconds back to Claire Bouchard. Stu, did you expect it to be so close? No, we thought Tracy would run away with it even more than she has, but yet again, she'll wear the flag on her sleeve. Tracy, a true champion. Tracy, you were the hot favourite to take this one out, but so many things can happen on a downhill course, but you were able to do it. Australian champion. Yeah, um, I guess no matter what race it is, I kind of push myself. And I saw yesterday that I had a pretty good gap for a bit on my sleeve, so I just wanted to see how far I could really push. Yeah, threw myself off in some of the first corners that are pretty hard, but... You were never hesitant, thinking, well, you've got a big buffer, you could take it easy and guarantee the gold. You still wanted to push yourself? I can't really ride like relaxed or anything once it's a race so I was pushing myself and even knowing that that gap was there I wanted to at least use this for training for the World Cup season where you can't take it easy no matter what so yeah it was a good start I was pretty happy with it. Well look give you a lot of confidence I'd imagine now going overseas to, to get the World Cup season kicked off. Yeah it's good to have like to race a, a few times in Australia before the season starts and just have a bit of a base before heading overseas and seeing what that brings this season. Well, congratulations, it's a fantastic performance. Thank you. The winner of the gold medal. She is one of the legends of Australian downhill. She has defended the title. Ladies and gentlemen from Queensland, Tracy Hanna. <laughs> Gold it was for Tracy Hanna. Silver, that went to the Canadian Claire Bouchard. And the young rider Tegan Malloy came away with bronze. After the break, it'll be Tracy's brother, sick Mick Hanna, going for gold. The jewel in the crown of northeastern Victoria, the Ovens Valley and the towns of Myrtleford and Bright have become an outdoor activity playground. Well connected by the Murray to Mountains Rail Trail, cyclists and walkers of all ages enjoy the beautiful wineries and the fantastic produce the region has to offer. A great place to unwind whether it's pedalling a bike, paragliding from Mystic Mountain, water skiing on Lake Buffalo or simply relaxing on the banks of the Ovens River.
can you guys collectively confirm or deny the rumour that team boss Emily only selects good looking roosters for her team? Um, yeah, confirm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> Time for the elite men to get down to business at the top of Mystic Mountain. And one of the first of our favourites is Thomas Crimmins from New South Wales. Let's see if he can get close to that four minute barrier. There's only been a couple of riders. Troy Brosnan set the fastest time in qualifying to go under four minutes. Connor Fearon also got underneath that mark. And Dean Lucas was also in the mix there as well. Let's see if Crimmins can get close to it. Look, his brother Andrew had a great run today, taking out the under-19s title. Thomas stood on the national podium in Threadbow at his home track this season. And he's coming down towards us now, this hard, pedally section at the bottom. He's working his way, trying to chase the time of Pinozzo, which was a 4.06.43. And he's going to just miss out on that. 0.55 of a second down on the time of Pinozzo for Thomas Crimmins. And a big sigh of relief there by Liam Pinozzo. The rider from Mount Beauty remains in the hot seat and a show of respect there with a handshake from the riders. Perhaps Liam's brother Chris can get the better now. The next rider to start at the top of Mystic Mountain. And look, Chris, uh, more regular on the enduro scene. And of course, gravity enduro has been one of the big changes in the sport in the last couple of years, combining the fitness of cross country with the thrills and spills of downhill. And Chris has had some great results in the newest discipline in the sport. We see him Chris coming towards Pinozzo. the finish now. Oh, and Chris Pinozzo down out of the trees. And look, this is so hard for these riders, working hard along this final burn into the finish arch. He's going to come through in a 4.21.25. It is not going to be quite good enough to unseat his brother, Liam. This is Graham Mudd now making his way down around that final berm transition. He's coming through the Subaru signs and he's just outside that now. What sort of damage can he do? Well, pushing hard though out of the saddle. He's gone past that best time though of Pinozzo. Not by too much though. Fourth best for him, 4.06 for Mud on what a course is absolutely full of dust. So perhaps a change of surnames and he might go a little bit quicker next time. And next in the start ramp at the top of Mystic Mountain, it's Josh Button. Let's see how he goes He's, as he prepares for the descent. Look, he was one of the dominant riders of last year's national season with a bunch of podiums and uh, took silver at the Queensland State Championships as we see some nice air as he heads into this quick section of the course where the finish was last year. And now he faces the same question as all riders at this point. Does he have the legs to make it to the finish? Pinozzo still in the hot seat, can breathe another sigh of relief. Not too many riders still to come through to the finish now. Big stars still to come though. Fearon, Brosnan. Hannah, Lucas, the big names, the ones we expect to go fastest. 4.17, eighth best time there for Button. Next up in the gate, it's the local. Aidan Varley sits at the top of Mystic Mountain, pedals hard down the straight. A lot of pressure on the local rider. He knows this course very well. Oh, and perhaps a little bit too much pressure. Covered in dust, you could see him adjusting his goggles as well. So he has binned it in the trees there somewhere. Aidan Varley, we made him just a little bit more famous in the preview videos this week. He went and rode the new road gap section. What can Varley do? The local pins it around the berms that he rode over and over for the film crew. Comes down now, it's a 4.15 as he drops onto the final straight. And he's going to go well enough to put himself inside the top 15. The place, oh, 16th in the end, 4.23.11 for Varley. And he's wearing a bit of the course on the right-hand side. I think that might explain uh, why he's not quite up there. Back to the top of Mystic Mountain now, and it's Jack Moyer in the start house. Now, he's one of four riders that went under four minutes in qualifying. So Liam Pinozzo from Mount Beauty sitting in the hot seat would be starting to get very nervous just knowing how fast Jack is coming down this hill. And look, Jack last year on the international scene had some great results. He took bronze at the 2014 National Champs. What can he do today? Number three now, Jack Moyer, 4.11 in qualifying. 4.06, the best time to beat so far Pinozzo. And here he comes, down past those Subaru banners. This is looking good. Gets to the bottom there at 3.51. Final push to the line. 4.06 to beat. Well, he's going to smash it. Comes across now in 3.59. The first rider to go under four minutes and straight to the hot seat. 
yesterday only two men went under four minutes we said you'd have to go faster today and we're certainly proving that fact next up none other than chris kavarek ladies and gentlemen this is a rider with amazing international results he's won almost everything there is to win Coming down now towards the transition of the double berms before making it into the finishing straight. Number 11 is going to be outside the best time of Moya. Maybe sixth, seventh, eighth place, perhaps possibly. Coming down across the line now, and it's 4.10 for him, sixth best. Ladies and gentlemen, we have four riders left on course. Mick. Sick Mick Hanna, Dean Lucas, Connor Fearon, and Troy Brosnan. In the hot seat, it's Jack Moyer. Can he hold on with a 359.79? Okay, Mick, we haven't seen a lot of you over the summer here on the dirt in Australia, but you have been around the world racing the uh, City Downhill World Series. What, how was that? Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, it's a lot of travelling, and but it's all, always fun to go to South America. That's where the first two rounds are. And, but it's a different style of racing, and it's probably the most dangerous racing I do for the year, which is probably not the best to do first up, but it's a good time, and there's lots of people following it. It's refreshing to do something different than what we usually do and just kind of roll into the season. finished fourth in the end I guess you're looking for some redemption this year how's the form yeah last year I was feeling really good and um, put a lot of pressure on myself for this race um, this year I've kind of got a little bit of a different approach but I definitely want to have a good run this weekend and um, it's always nice to be national champion and it's really it's a privilege to be able to spend the year with the Australian flag on your sleeve on the world circuit so hopefully we can win it again Obviously, you were pushing hard last year when you had the crash, but what do you think about this particular course? Uh, the course here is awesome. It's, there's really low traction. It's rough and loose and um, not too much pedalling, so it's, it's really a technical type of track, and um, that's what we love to do. So uh, Everyone enjoys it. I enjoy coming here, and it's nice just to be racing in Australia. Here he is, Mick Hanna, one of the pre-race favourites, the next to come from the top of Mystic Mountain. Best time set by Jack Moyer, 3.59. Can Mick Hanna get somewhere near that time, Stu? Absolutely. He's one of the true legends of Australian downhilling. We've seen Tracy Hanna take the win in the Elite Women. Mick is on the course and he's looking quick. 3.59, the time to beat. He has to get to the finish now in 10 seconds. It's not going to be for Mick Hanna outside the time. Already set by Moyer. Could be second still. 406 to keep him into second position. Final push to the line. Mick's going for it. 404, second best time. So holds on to the silver medal position with three riders remaining. And guarantees himself a podium, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see Sick Mick on a podium no matter what. Because we podium five in the elite downhill. We have three riders left. Next up, the Victorian prodigy. People were talking about him before he was super fast, when he was in the under-19s and 17s. These days, Dean Lucas is one of the fastest, and he's trying to make a statement. Can he show up the South Australians who are in front of him in seeding? 
He went so close to four minutes with a 4.03 in seeding. And as he comes into the berms, I can tell you he's going quicker than that today, ladies and gentlemen. And in fact, he is right on Moyer's split as he comes out of the forest. If he pedals hard, if he works, he could earn himself the hot seat and a medal this afternoon. And he does it. 3.59.44 into the hot seat, your own Victorian, Dean Lucas. 0.35 of a second faster than Moyer. What a performance it was by Dean Lucas right to the very end. And it is that flat section. You have to have some energy to push to the finish. And you can see how exhausted Lucas is. So much concentration. Thumbs up by Lucas. Number one for now with two riders, Ferran and Brosnan to come. Connor Fearon was crowned the Oceania champion just two weeks ago in Toowoomba. And this is quick as well. Fearon in the top 20 in the world had a big crash last year, but he's recovered well, not affected at all by it now. And this is fast, ladies and gentlemen. Connor Fearon seated second. He's going to go into the hot seat if nothing goes wrong in the next 10 seconds. He's out working hard. And ladies and gentlemen, the South Australian takes the hot seat with one rider left to go, Scott McGrory. Well, I am absolutely loving this Australian Downhill Championships. They've left the best to last, the fastest riders from seating, the ones we expect to go for gold, and the Australian Championship are really coming through with the goods now. Ferran into the hot seat, number two plate for now. Will he earn the number one for next year? Look, if there's one thing Connor Fearon is used to doing, and one thing many riders in Australia are used to doing, is sitting in the hot seat waiting for Troy Brosnan. Can Troy Brosnan do it? This guy is a superstar. He is absolutely a superstar. Medaled at the World Championships last year. He's got a third of a million fans on Facebook. Troy Brosnan kicks it through the berms, comes through the Subaru, and this is exactly on fear and split. You cannot pick this. Troy Brosnan working hard, hard, hard. Fear and Brosnan, fear and Brosnan. 3.56.26. He does it by 1.12 se 1.08 seconds. And ladies and gentlemen, Troy Brosnan defends his national championship title. Well, you can see the elation there. You can't see his face, but you know exactly what's happening behind the goggles and the helmet. Absolutely elated. Completely exhausted at the same time as well. Troy Brosnan, 21 years of age and a superstar of downhill racing worldwide. Troy, what a performance. That was amazing. Yeah, it was awesome. You know, the track was super blown out and dusty, like we all expected, but almost another level again. And uh, I just, you know, did a pretty much almost perfect run. And gave it a big sprint at the end to take the win so I'm super stoked I've done a lot of training and it's finally you know good to see it pay off type thing. Yeah, but the time was matched by what you were doing in qualification even though the track has been blown out which means look, theoretically you've gone faster again. Yeah for sure you know qualifying you try and throw it all out there to see what you've got but that race run you've always got a second or two more no matter what so uh, yeah it's good to good to go faster again and just uh, stoked with it all it's kind of all just mind-blowing. What does it mean to you to be the national champion now? You're about to go off to, to race the rest of the world in the World Series. Yeah, it means a lot. You know, I get to wear the sleeve on my arm for the, the whole year and just kind of, uh, you know, another confidence builder pretty much. You know, it's, it's another race and for it to be a national chance, it's just, uh, it's, you know, one of the ones that I love winning. You're still only quite young, so there's so much more you can do. You, you can see yourself wearing those rainbow bands sometime very soon. I really hope so. You know, last year was a, a breakout year for me pretty much and... Just uh, work on it from there, you know. I really want to get those rainbows one day and it might take me five, ten years, but, you know, I'll get them one day. In 2014, he stood on the World Championships podium. Today, he is yet again your national champion. Ladies and gentlemen, from South Australia, Troy Brosnan! And in the end, there was only three seconds separating the medals. Troy Brosnan in gold, Connor Fearon took out the silver medal, and Dean Lucas came away with bronze. Well, what a massive championships it has been. Peter Mullins, you've got to give us some of your highlights. 
Oh, I, I think the main highlight for me is just returning to Bright. I absolutely love it up here. The guys do a great job with their trails. I love hanging out by the river. And and I think the race highlight for me would have to be uh, one of my close friends, M Park. She's um, she's battled years and years with silver medals, and this year she's come come away with two um, two titles in the under 23 and then the Eliminator title today, so pretty happy for her. Well, that's a wrap from the Subaru Australian Mountain Bike Championship for 2015. On behalf of Peter Mullins, Mike Blewett and myself and all of the crew that have been up here in Bright, Thanks for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again next time.